it seems like a lot of work just to exist. Yeah, that's true. Like, it, there's so many, like, I can't go out in the sun. I can't, like, I have to sleep in a coffin. I can't let other people know me. Like, it seems like a lot. Especially to... now. If you were in the 1600s, it'd be a lot easier to be yeah, a vampire. Absolutely. It just doesn't seem like something that would be worth the amount of work I'd have to put into it. Mm. Eternal youth isn't worth the effort. No. Yeah. I, you know what? I agree. <laughs> it, it's two things that are appealing to opposite sides of me because the idea of eternal life, I, I hate and I'd be against that. I don't want to live forever. I like that life is finite and I um, look forward to my eternal rest one day. <laughs> but I also want more time to do stuff. And I'd have so much time if I were a vampire. True. I, I could learn every language. I could play guitar well. Because <laughs> I can't do that now. Yeah, that would be kind of neat. And like, I assume that like all vampires are rich. Well, that's not true. But you could do crimes. You'd just murder people. Yeah. But I feel though today you'd get caught. Yeah. You'd just get caught. It would be harder than in this movie because... You can just go to a different city and nobody knows who you are. Mm -hmm. You have no like digital footprint at all. And so you can just like be whoever you want to be. Whereas now you're like a specific person because everybody has seen you on the internet. You'd have to be committing fraud daily just yeah. to get around. You need a bank account to yeah. get anything, to have money. People aren't just going to do everything in cash. Yeah. You need That's... a social security. No, it would be too much. We're tracked too much now. Yeah. And I think, like, the fraud and the, like, crime and everything, it just, it's just too much work. I think people who are always about, like, oh, your phone tracks you. That's why I don't have one. They're probably vampires. Oh. All of those people are probably vampires. Oh, I've never thought about that. But, yeah, they totally are vampires. Yeah. yeah. Why, why don't you want them to track you? Because you're Because I've been alive for 400 years. And I drink blood. Yeah, that's why. Wow. Well, let's get into it. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to a very spooky episode of I Love This, You Should Too. Oh, you said too wrong. Too. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Sleeping in a Coffin, Indy Randawa, and with me is my lovely co-host, Some Sunlight's Okay, But Not All the Time, Samantha Randawa. <laughs> Hello. The sunlight rules are always like, eh. That's like the number one thing that I like get really critical of in vampire media mm -hmm. is like, what is the rule around sunlight? I think the rules in this are, well, you know what? We're jumping right into it. <laughs> Let's take one step back. We are in Spooktober now. We are in Spooktober. So we were doing all spooky things and Sam wanted to do some vampire work. Uh -huh. So we talked vampires last time and you picked which is your favorite vampire movie or was going in at least. Um, I'd say it was like my first vampire movie for sure. The most important vampire movie in your life. Sure. <laughs> which is? Interview with the Vampire. The 1994, because there's a TV show out right now. Yeah, I kind of want to see that. I don't know that I do. <laughs> okay, well, I might watch it on my own. Because <laughs> uh, this movie, well, let's let's ask you first. This was a big movie for you. Yes. You were very excited. You've been talking about doing Interview with the Vampire for years. For a year, since last Halloween. Yeah. And you got your wish now. Yeah. How did you like it? Um... I still really enjoyed it. I think I still love it. Oh, you still love it? Yeah. Like, what out of 10? How much love do you have for this movie? If, like, 10 is love love and 1 is, like, I'd say it's, like, a solid 8 for me. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I can see where either it didn't age well or, like, it's kind of hokey. But I, I really enjoyed, like, the world that is created by this mm -hmm. movie. And I think um, the same things that like drew me in as like a child or young person watching this are like still the same things that I, that I really enjoyed this time. 
That, just that gothic atmosphere. Yeah. And the Southern Gothic is is a genre that we don't see nearly yeah, as much. Yeah, it was very unique. And I think that's a, that's a good reason. Yeah, it's different than a lot of other vampire things. Now. Now. At the time, though, it was not. Oh, okay. But maybe you haven't seen many no. 90s. But, so we'll get into my feelings, I guess, then. It made me want to watch Eve's Bayou. Oh. But it is enjoyable if you convince yourself it is <laughs> like uh, it takes see, some and that's work the thing i like slid right in and it was like yeah i love this i had to actively turn off parts of my brain a lot <laughs> to not laugh at things in right. this movie because a lot of it borders on the silly it does there are some silly moments in this and if you start laughing at it which you could oh absolutely it's gonna be a worse movie experience for you yeah because it's not fun to sit and it is fun to laugh at bad movies. Yes. But this movie is in that middle ground mm-hmm. where you can commit to liking it. You just tell yourself, no, this is fun. And then you have fun with it. Mm-hmm. If you find yourself laughing at it, it's probably not, not nearly as enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I feel like this is one where you kind of have to let it like immerse you. You have to not think. Yeah. Because in addition to sometimes being silly, much of it doesn't make sense. True. So that is something you have to kind of deal with in in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be all right with things not really making any sense. Yeah, you can't. It's not like a deep, deep thinker where you're like, no. well, this is like this because of this. It's just kind of like, don't don't think too hard about it. Here's some fun vampires. Yeah. I think the more you think about this movie, the worse it gets. Uh-oh. Should we have podcasted right after we watched it? <laughs> I have found myself liking it less as the days went on. Because it's been, what, three or four days since three we watched? Three or four days, yeah. Right after, I was like, oh, that was fun. Yeah. And then just that night, I started thinking, wait, why did that happen? And a lot of it doesn't make sense. But you know what? You forgive some of that. Mm-hmm. And I've become less forgiving as time went on. But I'm glad that you still love it. Because yeah. that's going to bring me back into... A lot of this movie is quite fun. Yeah. It creates an atmosphere. And you know what? The silliness is kind of a part of that atmosphere. It's Mm -hmm. melodramatic. It's overwrought. The performances are uneven is maybe the (laughs) nicest way to say it. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. And if you just go into that world, it's it's fun. Yeah. It is fun. And I did have fun while watching it. Although I found myself more bored than i've been bored in a movie that we did for the podcast in quite some time oh really yeah Hmm. there are whole sections that i was like i don't really remember what happened there oh okay huh yeah there were some sections like as an adult having seen other movies and having consumed a lot of vampire content in my day um i can see like a lot of it was like filler it felt like like it wasn't essential to the plot it's so strange because plot things happen so fast and they just say their character development oh in the last 30 years this is what we learned let's move on but then there's also so much nothing in it yeah like how are they rushing the plot and then just languishing in nothingness at the same time Hmm. yeah yeah it's true because there's like a quick little like one minute montage of them moving to gear up and then all of a sudden they're there and they've been there for 10 years <laughs> i think they're trying to get in as many things as they can from the book right but they don't have the time to so they're just throwing in a glimpse of it and then yeah. not following through with it like there's entire relationships where i'm like wait what happened to armand wasn't that a thing he's just gone now yeah yeah, that was weird. Like the things people just disappeared really quickly and there was no consequence and there was no discussion of it later. Yeah, so it's kind of a just don't think about it. Yeah. The more you think about it, the worse this movie gets. Keep it moving. <laughs> so on that note, how do you want to talk about this movie? Um, I think we can talk about themes, we can talk about moments that we liked, but I think if we go through it By plot point, we're going to get real bogged down real quick. Maybe. I do have some information that's pre-movie because this was a fun one with casting. And I never really look at the IMDb trivia because that's usually not what we talk about. We get pretty in-depth in things. But I think this is a movie where that's kind Kind of of 
as relevant. The fact that this is a Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise movie is as much a part of this movie as vampires. Yeah. So if you had told me that, like, if you didn't tell me that it was Tom Cruise, I don't know that I would have figured it out. Oh, interesting. Because this is so unlike the Tom Cruise that I know of now, like who Tom Cruise is now. And it was uh, quite a departure at the time, too. Yeah. So I enjoyed his performance. I thought he went for something and he, like, did it. Um, but I don't know that if you, if I didn't know that that was Tom Cruise, if I would have been like, oh, look, it's Tom Cruise. Oh, good for him then. He did his job. Very different. Yeah. So let's go back. 1976, she writes the novel and Rice writes this book and she writes with Rutger Howard in mind. Oh, Rutger Howard. Rutger Howard? Uh, he, we saw him in Blade Runner. But I don't think you've seen a lot of movies with him. I have. And sure, why not? When they first started talking about making it a movie, John Travolta was the first person discussed to be Lestat. And then throughout uh, development, John Malkovich, Richard Gere, Peter Weller, Mel Gibson were in talks to play Lestat. And Anne Rice actually met with Tom Hanks after seeing him in Philadelphia and really wanted him to be in it. And that would have been so weird. Oh, there's a lot of different movies that this would have been had a lot of those people have been in this Tom movie. Hanks seems like the strangest choice. It's a very strange choice. And he instead did Forrest Gump that year. Oh, well, good for him. <laughs> Daniel Day-Lewis signed on to play Lestat, and that would have been a good... This would have been a completely different movie. It would have been a very serious and... Yeah. Maybe great movie. I don't know. It definitely would have been really different. And he dropped out just a couple of weeks before they started filming. Oh. So then they go to Johnny Depp. Oh. That would have been interesting too. 1994 Johnny Depp as Lestat. Yeah. I I gotta say, I'm I'm in for that. I would love to see that. All I can think of him as is Pirates of the Caribbean, because that's like the most character-y. Oh, <laughs> but this is, we've now watched some movies from this time. We saw yes. Ed Wood and Edward Scissorhands, which are around that Johnny year. It's Johnny Depp for sure. Yeah. But yeah, that would have been really interesting. I actually would have really enjoyed that, I think. I think Johnny Depp would have been good at either of these roles. And like I said in the pre-episode, I would have liked this movie better if the roles had been switched, and I might still think that. Yeah, I could see that. I was thinking about that as we were, like, watching it, and I think I agree with you that they could have switched, and it would have been uh, totally fine. So then Tom Cruise gets cast, and Anne Rice is furious she says that this is bizarre it's unimaginable how this could ever work and she has nothing to do with the movie then she's like i'm out at all and she doesn't go to the premieres she doesn't see it in theaters it's not until years later she gets a vhs and she's fine i'll watch it and then she loves it she says um she takes out an ad in a magazine i think apologizing to tom cruise and talking about how great he is oh Okay. So she loved Tom Cruise and said that this is um, exactly what she wants and that she loved the movie. She was a huge fan of this movie and said they did it perfectly. That's amazing to get that like author stamp of approval. Yeah, it just took a couple of years. (laughs) First, she refused to watch it. So then uh, in development, they had changed Louis's role to be female for a lot of it. Because they're like, we don't want people thinking they're gay. Really? Because isn't that the point? I thought they're supposed to be. No. They're not gay? No. They're not a couple. I don't think so. There's no gay coding in those two characters? No, there's 100% gay coding in there. But I never saw it like that. In the book? (sighs) It's been a long time since I read the book. I think they're a couple. Okay. I guess I didn't think much about this movie because I I was saying the more you think, the worse it gets. But <laughs> it totally seems like they are a couple, so much so that Lestat even does the, you're going to leave me? Well, I, we have a baby now, so now you can't. <laughs> he does baby trap him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's uh... No, you're right. I think I also 
didn't think too hard about this in between watching and now. Because it falls apart when you do. It falls apart when you think about it. And I kind of wanted to stay in my like happy little bubble of like, this is a great movie. But yeah, you're right. They are very clearly a couple. And they try to play it like they're not in the movie. So I get that if you're watching the movie, you think like, oh, that's not there. It's definitely played down. Oh, and when they had a female Louis... Uh, Cher and Angelica Houston were considered for it. Interesting. Angelica Houston, she can do whatever. So yeah. Huh. That would be interesting. Cher looks like a vampire now. Cher and who? Well, any one of those people that yeah. are Cher. This movie could have been Cher and Tom Hanks. What a weird movie. <laughs> what a different movie. <laughs> what an odd pairing. <laughs> and then auditioning for the role of Claudia were people like... Christina Ricci, uh-huh. Lily Sobieski, uh-huh. Julia Stiles, who is Lily Sobieski Sr., I think. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> and Natalie Portman. Oh, that would have been good. Natalie Portman was a great child actor as well. And Kirsten Dunst was fantastic in this. I loved her in this. And I kind of wish she hadn't died at the point that she died in the movie because I wanted to see more about her. I guess we can talk a little bit about performances right yeah, now. Yeah, absolutely. So what do you think? Who is good in this? Kristen Dunst. Mm-hmm. Also, the way that they dressed her, like, just amazing. I loved all the costumes in this, especially hers. Did you see any changes in how she dresses? Yes. She definitely starts to dress like a small lady by the end of it. Like, she's dressing more grown up. When Lestat's not around. Yeah. When she's with Lestat, I feel like he's dressing her yeah. and he's dressing her as a doll. It's like a small child. And then when she is on her own, or not on her own, with Louis, she is trying to be that adult that she wants yeah. to be. Yeah. I really enjoyed the, like... The timeline of her outfits and how she like you can tell that she's growing up just by um like her thinking and that kind of thing mm-hmm. because she's been alive for so much longer um and you can see like her frustration grow because she's not growing and then um she finally has a chance to like do whatever she wants when they move back to Europe. And I really liked her like small lady outfits. Her ball gowns and stuff were really great. I would say she gives the best performance in this movie. Oh, absolutely. I am a Brad Pitt fan. Uh I think he has done... I used to say he hasn't done a bad movie. That's clearly not the case anymore. He's done some bad movies, but I thought he rarely rarely gives a bad performance Mm -hmm. i think this is one of his worst ever really oh i thought he's terrible in this he's just there yeah he's not giving anything like like strenuous in this movie i get that you are playing you're you're broody Mm -hmm. that's all you are yeah that's his only character trait. partly the writing because he doesn't have much but Man, I've seen this guy transform. Mm -hmm. And here he's transformed into, I have long hair. Yeah, and And acrylics. (laughs) There's there's nothing to his character. Yeah. And Tom Cruise, I get people who don't like the performance. So like, he's over the top. He's ridiculous. Yeah, he's playing a vampire named Lestat in Interview with a Vampire, a ridiculous over the top movie. Yes. He should be. Yeah. I think his performance, I don't, wouldn't say it's great. I think it is good for this movie. Mm-hmm. And while I was watching him just kind of go for it, and he's, yeah. he's going for it, I did get taken out a little bit, and I'd be like, oh, this is silly. But as soon as he's gone, the movie gets boring. <laughs> so I guess it worked. Yeah, I think it was a good counterbalance to like how flat Brad Pitt was, for sure. Um, Louis didn't like you said, have much to him as a character. And I did want a little bit more from him, Um, especially the way that Claudia transforms when Lestat is gone. She has an arc. She has an arc. And I was really hoping or like wishing that um, Louis would also have an arc as they had kind of like a happy little period away from their troubles. She's the only one who has clear uh, motivation even. Mm -hmm. Because Lestat, I'm bad because I'm the big bad vampire. That's it. We don't know anything more. Louis, I'm sad because I'm the sad one. Yeah. 
That's it. We don't know anything My more. My wife died. She <laughs> was a child who was going to die. And then she has this regret about like, maybe she should have. Why is she with these people now? And then trying to accept this life with Louis. But then still feeling trapped in this body that yeah. she will never grow out of. Yeah. And that's that's a character. Mm-hmm. I couldn't tell you anything about Louis. And it's his movie. He's yeah. in this movie for... He's in two hours. We're with him for two hours. Yeah. I don't know much about him. No. Yeah, you don't learn much other than like his wife and child died. He burned down his plantation. He, he burns be- down all problems. Yeah. If he ever has a problem, he burns it down. Burns it right down. Um. Yeah, I would have liked a little bit more from Brad Pitt. Um. I did think it was funny that he had like acrylic nails on the entire time. What do you think of the makeup in this movie? I thought it was good. But it's nothing uh, crazy. No. This movie, for whatever reason, it was like, oh my God, the makeup in it. It's amazing. And I don't see it. Like, I know I can't remember the artist's name now, but he's done other good work. And I know he has. I don't think this is it. Tom Cruise would spend four hours a day in makeup. For what? I know. I've been in movies where I had like half of my face burned off and it would take like a good hour. Two hours sometimes. Yeah. And it, I got to say, John and Kat, who did my makeup, you're better than Interview <laughs> with a Vampire because I looked better. Um, Yeah, that's like some foundation and a wig. It looks, well, and a terrible wig. A terrible The wig. wigs look bad in this movie. Yeah, they only got one shade of hair. Yeah, it seemed like for a while everyone had the Brad same color Pitt's of hair. Brad Pitt's the only one. And Claudia has like a very like golden blonde. Right. But everybody else has this like dishwater blonde hair. Yeah. And everybody has it. Like I was amazed. It's like they got a 20 for $10 sale on <laughs> wigs or something. And everybody had this hair. And I don't understand why that was the hair color. Could have done some like really cool things. The makeup was so strenuous that Brad Pitt tried to get out of the movie during the movie. He's like, this is too much. I hate it. And it he learned it would cost about $40 million if he wanted out. So he's like, okay, fine, I'll, I'll, I'll struggle through. Okay, but like, what were they doing? He had to contacts him? and foundation. Yeah, that's like just three shades paler than his normal face. And like a wig. I thought it looked kind of cakey even. It did look cakey. So apparently this sounds made up and unnecessary, but this is what I heard. That the actors would have to hang upside down for 30 minutes. So that would force the blood to their heads and cause their blood vessels in their face to bulge. And then they would trace over that to get the veins accurate. You know what else you could do? You can draw it on. You can take a picture. Yeah. Like you can look up anatomy books. Yeah. It seems like this movie was... Uh, Method? In, in many ways, this movie thinks it is the prestige drama of the decade. Wow. And it's just not. It's not. It's silly and fun. Let it be silly and fun. Yeah, I do not understand what they were doing for four hours a day. I guess if you're hanging upside down for 30 minutes, and then I'm sure drawing veins on isn't, like, quick. I I don't know. I don't know. Like, I'm trying to, like, make this make sense in my mind. I've been on very low-budget sets where I wore a lot of makeup and prosthetics, and I would argue that it looks better than this, and it definitely didn't take that long. Yeah, yeah. And then there were things like Tom Cruise wanted this to be a private set. So tunnels were built to like get actors in and out so like no one would see them. Oh. And of course, if you're doing a Tom Cruise movie, there's a lot more time spent on how to make Tom Cruise tall. Right. So if you got your standard Apple boxes and stuff, but there's yeah. stories of Brad Pitt having to walk in a trench that's dug along the riverbanks and stuff just so he'll be... Well, Brad more... Pitt's only like two inches taller than... Tom Cruise. Is that true? I don't know. Yeah. And it looks like that. And I looked it up. <laughs> but I don't think whatever you look up has Tom Cruise's actual head. Oh, yeah. Because he's probably like gotten his PR people to like. It probably says somewhere like, oh, he's 5'9". He's not 5'9". It said he was 5'7". And that Brad Pitt was 5'9". Oh, really? Yeah. Brad Pitt's that short. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I never. All really... actors are tiny is what I've learned. 
<laughs> but I was like, good for them for getting a pair that they could make look taller together. Right. Like, because they can shoot it in a certain way that, like, they'll both look taller. Um, whereas, But then eventually they have to be next to someone, like, a woman who's much taller than them. <laughs> yeah. So then they had to they only, mess with it. They, everyone was on their knees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Walking around in their it's like ball Gary guns. Oldman and tiptoes. Um, yeah, I uh, I did think about that because I googled while we were watching the movie because I saw them together and I was like, isn't Tom Cruise like real short? But um, they're pretty close to the same height according to Google. Um, who knows if maybe Tom Cruise is like five four? Oh, this says Brad Pitt is five eleven. Oh, well, but I don't know. Internet, you know. Oh, and then the other fun thing from set is Tom Cruise has all of these demands, of course. And Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise, have you seen any other movie they've been in together? No. They refuse to work together. Really? To this day, yeah. So they had such tensions between them. The only thing that I've seen documented is Tom Cruise said that Brad Pitt wouldn't wash enough and he smelled too bad. Oh. And that's the main thing he hated. And then... Brad Pitt hated working in these conditions, and the conditions were often created by the demands of uh, Tom Cruise. Oh, because Tom Cruise was like, I want this, I want that. Well, it's not even like, do this for me. It's like, this movie needs to be in secret. So we're doing it all... Tunnels. Yeah, yeah, things like that. And the the lighting and stuff, Brad Pitt just apparently hated working on this movie. And I think it shows in his performance, because I think it's... The worst he performance have a I can think of. A certain amount of like disdain for what he is doing. Yeah. Like he doesn't seem to be enjoying himself. So that actually makes a lot of sense just based on who Louis is in this movie. There is no explanation to the motivation where I'd be like, okay, this makes sense. But if you just say, oh, Brad Pitt was miserable and didn't want to be there, I'd be like, yeah, that yeah, checks that, out. That's, that's like, he was like a sullen teenager who's like. But going... the character's supposed to be a sullen teenager too, yeah. kind of, right? True. He's just mopey. But like, I feel like there are other ways to play sullen teenager vampire. What than I'm going to say is that I am much less critical of David Boreanaz after this. <laughs> True. <laughs> because he's playing the same thing. And I, I think Angel is one of my least favorite characters in Buffy. And he looks kind of good compared to He's Brad more Pitt in this. fun than Louis. Well, later he is. Do you think they know each other? No, Louis doesn't know any other vampires, remember? Oh, that's right. Lestat and Angel probably knew each other. Right. And Spike. Back in the day, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were all like running in the same circles. Drusilla and Darla, they're all... Yeah, oh yeah. Lestat would totally fill it in with that gang. Uh-huh. Man, I just want to talk about Buffy instead. Drusilla would probably love Claudia. Oh, yes. They'd probably be like best friends. That's true, too. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Go off on a little Buffy tangent there. Oh, and then the last casting thing I had was Christian Slater got the role after River Phoenix died. It was going to be River Phoenix in that role. Oh, interesting. I liked him as the journalist. Yeah. He I didn't think have it wasn't much, much of a role, but yeah. Okay, so let's let's start off at the okay. beginning. Why is he there? Because he Ooh. says, Christian Slater's journalist says, oh, you looked interesting, so I followed you home. Yeah. He just is a... a a newspaper writer who goes around and goes like, that's a funny coach. I'm going to follow that person home and get their life story. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. And then Louis like, oh, I've been tracking you and I wanted you to see me. Yeah, and actually, I was going to eat you yeah. until you decided to be my biographer and stuff. Yeah, I, uh, I don't really understand that whole dynamic of like i was gonna eat you but then i didn't because i want to tell you about this movie starts with the sentence so you want to hear my life story and that's just that's lazy i, I don't like when <laughs> every scene starts with like a recap of how you got there yeah just just do it yeah just, just tell the story don't it's say like, like ah we are here for my life story let us progress now let me tell you all about my life. And then he does those like warp speed around the room and it has like a really silly campy music sting. Yeah. That was, as soon as it started, I was like, oh man, this is rough. This is going to be a bad movie. But it does get better once you get into the flashback. But it that does. beginning was was just terrible. It was terrible. The modern day stuff isn't great. 
Oh, because then the end. Yeah. Oh, my God. We'll get there. But we'll get there. God damn. That was ridiculous. Um. <laughs> yeah, that was like anything in the modern day doesn't have like the gothicness that the like Louisiana bits and like the old timey bits have. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's a lot more obvious kind of how hokey this part is because you're missing all of this beautiful set dressing. <laughs> Very true. And I think that speaks to how much of this movie relies on actual set design because it doesn't usually use characters or writing to get its point across. It uses Mm -hmm. set design. Yeah. As the story starts and we first go to see Louisiana and like the plantation and the fact that he's like a slave owner. Oh, yeah. Which is never really brought up. No, no. And I don't think you can just be like, okay, hey, you're free now. That's not how the sense No, work. someone else is just going to, if <laughs> yeah. they walk away, they'll get killed yeah. or re-enslaved. I'm sure there's some sort of paperwork. That... Also, it's the South. You're just not free. No. You can't be free. No. That's not how it works. But the slaves, too. They're all like wild and dancing yeah. and killing chickens and doing voodoo. And then they also come to Brad Pitt and beg him to be their master. Yeah. Because, like, you know, slaves are all doing like voodoo really and they just really want to be want enslaved. <laughs> they just really want a quality white master. Yeah. And he was ignoring them too much? You'd think that that would be like a good thing. Yes. Like, oh, cool. You're going to give us less work and you're going to make our lives less horrible by just not being around. Perfect. Cool. Let's do that. But no, they just want to be good slaves, I guess. Yeah. Terrible. The portrayal Terrible. of the slaves bothers me. I just think we could have done a better portrayal of slaves. Or don't include it if you're not going to yeah, do anything with it. It's true. It was kind of not necessary. No. Because it's never brought up again. No. Yeah. Our hero owned slaves and burnt it all down the end. And yelled, you're free now. Yeah. <laughs> and that was like his redemption arc of that. It's like, yeah, he owned slaves, but he let them all go after he burned their homes down. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy. What a guy. What a nice guy. And I, it seems kind of like the day after he gets turned into being a vampire, he does the whole, you've condemned me to hell. Yeah. He doesn't have any fun time with it at all. No. And also, when he gets turned into a vampire, the statues come to life. Yeah. That's Never see that again. The like memorial statues, like moving its eyes around. It's like, wink. Yeah. Which was hokey. And I think that that did not need to be in there. It doesn't come up ever. No. Because they say everyone sees things differently and they have different powers. We don't really talk about that. Yeah, Some people if, can read minds, apparently. Yeah. Brad Pitt can get see statues' eyes move. Yeah. That's all he gets? Yeah, he just gets, like, an animate object moving around. He might be crazy. Might be a vampire. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, it would have been cool to see, like, the vampire gift, which is, like, part of vampire lore, is, like, vampires get different gifts and like is it i've never heard that outside of this that every vampire has its own thing yeah yeah there's um it's in twilight for sure so there's like some people can never see read the future. those some, well we watched the movie oh right that's the well, yeah yeah so like some people and didn't i say s- that in that movie like why didn't they explore that more that seems yeah. fun huh. yeah some people can like transfer thoughts without like speaking and some people can see the future some people can like read minds and like that kind of thing some people can like influence people with their like vampireness to do things well that sounds fun i wish they talked about that i wanted more of that what's louis's power i don't know statue moving well we never see that again broodingness vacant stares yeah um we saw having a different hair color yeah. That's his. <laughs> Claudia's power is also hair. Yes. Yeah. She grows those sweet ringlets. Yeah. As soon as she becomes a vampire, her hair, her hair like, gets becomes. Ooh, great. Yeah. It styles itself. Yeah. I wouldn't have expected that. No. No. So I feel like the nice thing to do before you turn someone into a vampire is to like be like, go get a haircut. Because mm, it's going to be your hair Because it's going to be your hair forever. Yeah. Um, like get your beard and like your shaving in order um and then we'll turn you into a vampire i've actually thought about that and i was thinking what would i want my hair and beard and everything to be do i want to be clean shaven because then i wouldn't have to shave anymore i think i do just like long hair 
And I'd want to get into real good shape before I got to her. Because then you'd go back to that, I guess. Oh, real shape forever. Yeah. Nice. You never have to work out. Yeah. I feel like as a woman, long hair is the most versatile. Yeah. Because some of those like Louisiana, or not Louisiana, when should they go to Europe? Some of those like 1800s Europe styles involve a lot of like curl and volume. So mm-hmm. I feel like if you had short hair, you'd be like ostracized. So then they kill Lestat. Yeah. And how long is he in the swamp? They kill him and he's dead. They, they're like, oh, he's dead. Let's dispose of the body. He seems like But he's... he wasn't dead. No. He's never dead. He's never dead. So they throw him in the swamp and then he comes out as a swamp monster later. How long was he in the swamp? Was yeah. it like overnight? Or was it 10 years? I don't know because the passage of time in this movie... So hard. So confusing. Yeah. And I don't know if that's because like... Time is different when you're immortal. Yeah. Also, I think this movie just doesn't care. It just doesn't care about the timeline. Um, because they never tell us, have you been living in Europe for 10 years? Have you been living there for 10 months? Could be either. And so I feel like Louis was in the swamp for a long time. Oh, I thought Lestat was in the swamp oh, overnight. Overnight? I thought it was the next day. Huh. When he comes back and it's like, oh, I'm a swamp monster. Oh, you know what? No, actually, it might have been years. <laughs> I'm not sure. I can't remember. <laughs> Someone out there knows the answer. It's like, it's very clear. Oh. But it's not clear. Wikipedia. Oh, um, sure. Yeah. Um. So Claudia and Louis dump Lestat's body in a swamp. They spend weeks planning a voyage to Europe to search for other vampires. But Lestat returns on the night of their departure. So he's in there for weeks. Okay. Why don't they travel? They were in Louisiana for a hundred years. Yeah. How? He never leaves the state. So that's the thing that I wouldn't want as a vampire was that like people would notice that you're not aging, right? Like yeah. it would be very, very obvious. Um, so like how did they stay in one place for a hundred years? No idea. It doesn't go it doesn't into make any, any of any sense. To How me. did they have money? Because he had a, a plantation. He could have lived there. Yeah. But he burned it down. Yeah. He's supposed to be like really, really wealthy at the beginning of the book. I remember that. Sure. But what? where is his wealth? Does yeah. he have just cash with him? He must. He burnt everything down in a rage. Yeah. I don't think he has anything after that. Hmm. They just get what they get from people. Yeah. Also, there's a point where... Claudia says, Louis used to eat rats. When did he start eating people? Yeah. That's the thing. That's a so huge he's character so thing. so self-righteous about the fact that he will not eat human blood. He's like, no, I'm not a monster. Yeah. I'm not a monster. And then like 20 minutes later, they're like wistfully thinking about when he ate rats. Yeah. So that was is he eating people? I assume so. She would know because she spends every day with him for I decades. I assume that he relaxed into vampire life as Claudia came into the picture. So this is an actual character moment. Yeah. Never even no. addressed. It's not even on screen. Nothing. That's probably his biggest change as a character mm-hmm. outside of becoming a vampire. Yeah. And they don't even show it? No. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah, it is weird. I didn't think about that. But yeah, like why? Because that's his like fundamental thing at the beginning is that he refuses to eat human. Yeah. And then he... Eating poodles and rats. Yeah. I don't know what changed there. But yeah, that could have been explored further instead of being in like a 30 second conversation. Yeah. So they poison him Mm -hmm. and bury him in a swamp. Yeah. And they thought he was dead. And you'd think being vampires, they would know when a vampire is dead. But they were wrong. Well, they threw him in the water, and then they saw blood come out of the water when the alligator, but it turns out it was Lestat drinking the alligator's blood. Oh, I thought they thought he was dead when they threw him into the swamp. They're like, we're disposing of the body. Oh, we're yeah, not they him. totally thought he was dead. So they think he's dead, they throw him in a swamp. Vampires apparently can't tell when a vampire is alive or dead. No. Or vampires also don't know what kills the vampires, it seems like. That's the other thing in this. Like, all the vampire media or like most of it, that I have consumed, it's very set in stone what vampires can do and can't do, as well as what kills them. Like those are the rules that are given to you within like the first 20 minutes of like watching something. And they do that here, but like in a shitty way, because he just straight out says it like, oh, stake in the heart. (laughs) 
that's the nonsensical ramblings of a demented Irishman or whatever it is. <laughs> right. Why has Anne Rice had to take a shot at Bram Stoker? She has no right. <laughs> you owe a lot <laughs> yeah. to Dracula. And you've taken a lot from Dracula mm-hmm. for this book. But um, that's besides the point. They say, yeah, stake to the heart. That's silly. But a coffin? Oh, you need a coffin. <laughs> yeah. But why? The coffin isn't... Uh, his coffin you can use any coffin yeah you can be uh, several people in one coffin you can just build a coffin and go sleep in there Mm -hmm. so why how big does the coffin have to be for it to work if i was in a a crib does that work a bed with a lid on it is that fine i think that's what a coffin is yeah but but what's what are the coffin rules yeah i think the coffin piece is because of sunlight and it's like so you could just be in a basement you could just be in a basement with blackout curtains but they did say you need to have a coffin specifically yeah so it does need to be a coffin i guess so that's just i i I get we're arguing about rules of fictitious creatures yeah but you need to make those rules make sense to what you're doing yes i know it like it's all fake we get that we get vampires aren't real but the uh If in this world, vampires are real, they should have some sort of logic to them. Absolutely. And that's the thing that I like about vampire stories or The lore is fantastic. Is you get this set of rules and then you know what's happening. Like you know what the rules are. And in this, it's very wishy-washy. No stakes to the heart, which is kind of the hallmark. That's the number one. That's the pinnacle of how to kill a vampire. Sunlight and stake to the heart. Yeah. But yeah. They dropped that, but they said, oh, vet- the coffin is important, but not the old lore of having it being land from your ancestral lands right. or anything like that. We're losing that. It just has to be a physical coffin. It yeah. can be anything, though. Yeah. So I'll just s- a cardboard box? Can they sleep in a cardboard box? I guess so. What it's- happens if you sleep in a bed? Yeah. Will you not be able to sleep or so will you die? Claudia. But you can't die. Has can a bed. Right. Like, you see her with all of her dolls and everything. And that corpse. And that corpse. Which these super sensitive vampires don't know, even though Brad Pitt's literally sitting on the corpse. Yeah. But they can't smell it. Anyways, go on. I did wonder about that, too. Um, Like, why wouldn't she just sleep in that bed? You can't. It has to be a coffin. That's so weird. Can it be, like, a nice coffin with, like, padding and, like, satin lining? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Like the fancier, the better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just, yeah. I just missed the like concrete rules being laid out for us. Or having them follow the rules. Any rules, yeah. So nothing kills vampires except vampires always think vampires are dying because they throw Lestat into the swamp. He's dead. Oh, he comes back. So Louis solves it like he solves all of his problems and he sets Lestat on fire Everything is so flammable in this movie, and especially oh Lestat. <laughs> Everything was so flammable in the 1700s. <laughs> so they set him on fire. So now they're like, he is definitely yeah. dead. 100% dead. They've burned down the house. Again. Slash the entire quarter of Louisiana. Yeah. <laughs> He's so dead that Claudia is killed. She's tried and convicted yeah, for murder. For murder, yeah. So this whole section when they meet the other vampires. First, Stephen Ray doing his mime thing. Ugh. I hated it I so hate that. much. I... I hated it so I got so angry and I wanted that character to die instantly. Yeah, there was not a lot about this movie that like annoyed me. I just wanted that whole scene to be cut. Like why? What what was the point of that? I was irrationally angry at that part of the movie <laughs> i was so annoyed by his character i wanted to punch stephen ray more than i've hated a character in a movie in a while <laughs> and then they are the classic they're just laughing all the time yeah. they're just it's like so, everybody is just like ah, ha, 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 the entire time so the only crime a vampire can commit is killing another vampire that's the worst thing you right. can do So when they hear that they may have killed a vampire, they take Claudia and this woman who has no idea what's going on. She's been a vampire for like 10 minutes. She was turned into a vampire that day, I think, right? Yeah. So she's mid-transformation, like as her body's dying and she's like becoming immortal. They pull her out of that apartment as she's doing that. So I feel like she has literally been a vampire for like 10 minutes. So in their world... The worst thing you can do is kill a vampire. 
and they hear maybe a vampire was killed. We don't know. Yeah, we don't have any proof. We just kind of heard about it. We never checked. And apparently you can't kill a vampire because they keep coming back every yeah, time. Yeah, he's not dead. Even if Louis <laughs> said like, oh, we set him on fire, then Armand should be like, oh, yeah, that doesn't kill him. He'll be back. Kind of. In differing degrees of And they never aliveness. ask questions about it. No. They're not like, oh, like you threw him in the swamp or you gave him laudanum blood or like whatever. Yeah. It's like, yeah. And then he came back. Like that's an important piece of information was that he keeps coming back from the dead. And nor did they ask who killed him. Yeah. I assumed that like Lestat, Armand could read mimes. I think so. But if he read mimes, he would know the truth, Mm -hmm. which is that Lestat's not dead. Right. And also, Claudia didn't do it. Didn't Louis throw the the lamp that set him on fire? So she drugged the boys with laudanum. But that was the first time. Yeah. Then he comes back after that. Yes. But I think she originally tried to murder him. But she didn't. No. So is the crime for attempted murder also death? Because that's not what they say. The no. The crime for killing a vampire is death. Yeah, I don't know. I think Louis threw the lamp. I may have forgotten, though. I think Louis threw the lamp. And I think it was accidental. I think so. And Lestat's just so fucking flammable. Like, everything. Everything in this movie (laughs) is so flammable. I was laughing because, like, we have lived in our house for, like, almost two years now. And we have curtains in, like, two rooms. But I'm like, our house is so much less flammable than Every place that they go in this movie. Because we have fewer lace curtains and fewer vampires. Yeah. But I was going to just do like a full 18th, 1800s uh, window treatment in our house. I'd actually be down with that. Yeah. With the like five foot deep window like areas. So they have no reason to believe that Claudia has killed anyone, but they take her and that other woman and they're saying killing a vampire is the worst thing you can do and to show you that we are gonna cackle and laugh the entire time while we kill this innocent woman nine years the laughing is too much it's too much and it makes them seem like they're murdering people well they were yeah but i mean like it makes it seem like they know that they're just like murdering someone for fun oh maybe they did Maybe. But then why is there a big thing about, oh, the worst thing you can do is Yeah, those two things don't go together. But they seem like crazy people. They seem like cartoon vampire villains from a different movie or TV show. uh, 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 uh. The laughing was too much. I hated it. That was better laughing than they did. (laughs) But they say, Louis, you're the one who actually did the killing. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get a a punishment worse than death. You're going to be locked up forever yeah and by forever i mean like 25 30 minutes yeah because then they just pull him right out yeah he pulls uh armand pulls him out but the crazy vampires like put him in a coffin and it's like a safety coffin so you can't get out like there's there's like things that you tighten so that you can't get out of this coffin. he's locked in there and then they put him upside down and brick him in Oh, I didn't know he was upside down. He was upside down, yeah. Yeah, they they show him upside down like once or twice. Okay. And then they give him the cask of Amontillado treatment and they brick him up. Yes, they brick him into the wall. And like, I don't know anything about like building with bricks, but like how long does it take for like mortar to set? Doesn't matter. He's in a coffin anyway. True. And also doesn't matter because he's let out 25 minutes later. So it takes less than 25 minutes. Okay. Or more than than 25 minutes because they let him out very easily. And everyone just watches him be let out and they're like, oh, okay. Yeah, everything's fine. So none of that made... Again, it just doesn't make any sense. What are they even doing? I feel like Armand doesn't have a part in the murdering. Right. Um, And because he saves Louis... Like he takes him away. Because he's in love with Louis. Sure. He is. That's not just a me. Yeah, you can see that. That's very clear because Louis then goes, kills everyone. All of his friends. People that he's been with for centuries. Sets. Well, first they watch him leave and everyone's like cool with this. Like, oh yeah, we killed um, the that girl that you love and uh, you want some vengeance? Oh, well, 
we're just gonna we'll leave the door open we'll see you later maybe yeah and they just let him leave and then of course he comes back in sets them all on fire because he sets all of his problems on fire <laughs> the scythe time i actually thought that was fun that was fun i like that He's just chopping them up and then when Stephen ray comes in on a little fast because he has quicksilver speed down he just chops up in half <laughs> that was good that's another piece of like how to kill a vampire is you can decapitate them yeah but some didn't they just get chopped through the chest yeah, they just got like chopped in half. Wait, all the people that got set on fire, they're actually fine though. Yeah, I guess. Because that doesn't kill you. Yeah, maybe it was just more like, I just want to torture them a little bit. But he thought that setting someone on fire does kill them. Yeah, because he still doesn't know that Lestat's, Lestat's alive. alive. Armand saves him because he's obsessed with Louis. He has He's drawn to him and he's in love with him. And then what happens to Armand? He's just like, bye. Yeah, he's like, bye. He's like, you uh, attempted to kill all my friends. I'm leaving. Wait, does Armand leave him because of all the murder? I thought it was the other way around. No, Louis leaves Armand because he rejects the fact that like those were Armand's people that killed Claudia. And Armand really wants Louis to like be with him. Yeah, everyone's inexplicably in love with Louis. Louis is... Maybe that's his power. He's like the sulky, dark like dark twisty boy in like high school that everyone has a crush on everyone's like oh he's so mysterious they're like you know that creepy loner that never talks to yeah. anyone what a dream of. yeah i guess it works for angel and i never saw that appeal either <laughs> um i think or edward i think they're all like creepy dudes they are creepy and not dudes. physically attractive but they're yeah. the the world disagrees Boats full of women love them. Yeah. It's true. They're, they're always on boats. <laughs> always on boats. I don't know why I chose boats, but... <laughs> <laughs> Louis, once again, is just like real sulky because Claudia gets killed and he just like travels the world alone forever. See that? I would like to see that. Yeah. And then he's like going to movie theaters and he watches some good movies, actually. Yeah, I saw some of those. We saw Dracula or... Was that Nosferatu? Nosferatu was in there, I think. Um, Sunrise, another good movie. Oh, I don't know that one. But yeah, there was like lots of like classic movies in there, which was kind of fun. And like kind of a cool like idea that, yeah, vampires, like more modern vampires who can see films, like could see things that they wouldn't be able to see normally. Like I like that a lot. That was Daylight. A, yeah. I think that was one of the few times this movie had uh, some emotion to it. Mm-hmm. Some emotion that resonates outside of just um, like sulkiness. And yeah, like getting to see day and all of the things that come with it and being able to see sunrise. That was like very touching. And you're kind of also celebrating the power of cinema in, in a movie, which yeah. is a good touch too. Well, homage to cinema. So then he eventually finds Lestat. Yeah, he goes back to Louisiana. And he just stumbles upon him. So he goes back to his house. Or like their apartment in Louisiana. That's their apartment. Whose apartment? The one that Louis and Claudia and Lestat lived in. Okay. So he goes back. But wasn't that 200 years earlier? It was like 100 years earlier. And it's just still sitting there It's still sitting there empty. What? I don't know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So he goes and Lestat's just like sitting there surviving on rat blood. So and he's been there for presumably 100 years? So, so um, it says on Wikipedia, I'm going by this, it's 1988, the year I was born, uh, that he returns to Louisiana and um, Claudia and Louis settle in Paris in 1870. So Lestat's been sitting in that uh, empty apartment for a hundred years. Yeah. That, okay, okay. <laughs> I was going to argue with like you, like this was your choice, but. But we can I, both agree that it makes no sense at all. No, that makes no sense. And why? Because they seem to live in like the thick of New Orleans. Yeah. Like like they seem to live like downtown, like in like where there was a lot of trade and like people. So Also, there was a big would, fire there. Yeah. Has it not been rebuilt? rebuilt? Yeah, there was like a whole in a hundred section years? of the city. You'd think that it would have all been torn down and rebuilt, especially like now that it's the 80s and like there's a lot more building going on i'm sure so yeah that didn't make a lot of sense as to why there is a burned out building with a vampire in it 
Okay, well, like, we can just attribute that to one of those things that just doesn't make no. sense. Don't think about Don't it. Don't think about it. But they do pay special attention to the fact that he's like weakened now because he was set on fire, presumably. Yeah. And he's not getting the good blood. Yeah, he's eating rats. But that was good enough for Louis for like 100 years. Yeah, he whatever was it was. Totally fine. But it, he, Louis wasn't set on fire. True. And he also wasn't he sets things on dosed with laudanum and had his throat slashed. That was months before. Or True. years. True. I'm not we sure. We are not sure when any of this happened. <laughs> but he had 100 years to recover. Yeah. But sometime between 88 and 94, he fully recovers. Yeah. So it took 100 years of just like rats and then you get like one human and then you're good to go? Yeah, that's kind of what it seems like. And luckily, no humans came into that building in the last hundred years. Yeah, why? It's... Why was there a helicopter searching yes. it? Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. No. And also, it's 1988, mm-hmm. and he has never seen electric lights? Yeah, he lives in, like, downtown Louisiana. I assume he lives in, like, the French Quarter, too, so, like, Mardi Gras? <laughs> like... Everything has lights on the outside of it now. Also, no one in the French Quarter spoke French. They just have French accents, yeah. which is weird. But I was going to say, I could understand him not seeing a helicopter, but he doesn't understand what electric lights are because he thinks it's sunlight. Yeah. So maybe he just woke up that day. I maybe. Know. He's been laying there unconscious for a hundred. You know maybe what? None of it makes sense. he went into a coma and his heart felt that his true love, Louis, was close. And so he woke up. That, as silly as it is, makes more sense than any of the other things we said. Yeah, absolutely. Than him just sitting there for a hundred years, eating any rat that like jumped on his lap. Yeah. And then that would also make more sense like if he's in like a, like more of a, like a dormant state, I guess, for a hundred years. Like a tardigrade. A what? (laughs) Tardigrade. They can go dormant for many years. Is that an animal? Yeah. I'm going to have to look that up after. They squeeze all the water out, out of their body and dehydrate and then they're... Uh, metabolism slows to like less than one percent and they're so light then that they can be carried on the wind and then they go to a new place that's more hospitable and they live their life wow i was thinking about like bears oh they're water bears that's what they call them they're called water bears they're not really bears though anyways Anyways, back to this movie so i always kind of thought that Lestat had like gone dormant basically as he's like recovering from his burning yeah and i think it's another one of those of, like, like don't don't think about it don't think about it too much if you think about it, it doesn't make any sense if you don't think about it it's kind of fun yeah why is I there think. a helicopter there don't worry about don't it don't worry about it well how has he not seen electric lights by 1988 don't worry about it how has he not seen electric lights by like when was electricity invented well it wasn't invented but uh the but when li- was it harnessed <laughs> <laughs> popularity of light bulbs i want to say well didn't new york have street lamps in like 1890 but those are oil so i I was gonna say i feel like in his lifetime he may have seen electricity as like a novel thing right like when they were like oh look this could be the future because nothing's like brand new and gets implemented that day so i feel like he would have experienced that at some point. They've been around for 100 years. Yeah. Not popular, but, but surely like for the last 50 years. Yeah. And he's he died in like 1870. So I feel like electricity was around. Or at least they were at least talking about it. Not in lights. Okay. That's like 1880. And not popular for a little while after that. Okay. Maybe not. That it was um, oil lamps and stuff. Right. But either way, it's 1988. Yeah. <laughs> You had to, I assume that he would have come out of his dormancy every so often to like feed. You're doing a lot of work trying to I really uh, make this movie make sense. I and really it, am. That part just doesn't. Okay, I give up. But what makes even less sense is at the end, Christian Slater is going to say like, oh, turn me. I want to be like you. And yeah. it's like, have you learned nothing? And that's kind of, that's, that's fair. a theme. Yeah. That's actual content and writing so i was very happy that that exchange happened it wasn't great but this movie gives you so little of uh you know consequence and people thinking about things and character <laughs> yeah, development that when really it happens does. you're like oh that's pretty sweet yeah so that was a cool bit and brad pitt says no and chases him away he just runs away right yeah like gets into his car he like lunges at him 
uh, starts listening to the tapes. He's like, oh, great. I have this uh, story about a very boring man of 300 <laughs> years of his a life. A really long time. <laughs> and then Lestat pops up from the back seat? Yeah. What the fuck was that? Yeah. And he's like, fine. He's like beginning of he's the good movie again. Lestat. Yeah. yeah. So some, between 88 and 94, he got healed. Yeah, he probably just ate some humans. <laughs> well, we don't need to get into that because that already, we dwelled on that and it doesn't yes, make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. But anyway. why is he in the back of the car? Um, I don't know. That is one of the stupidest things that's happened in any of the movies we've done on this podcast. I just kind of assumed that he did the fast thing and like jumped into the car. But why is he there? He's been following Louis? Yeah, I assume so. That's so much like, yeah, I assume this happened. And of course, you're trying to justify <laughs> it, but that makes no sense that he's just secretly following Louis around. Well, he loves him. I guess. I guess. <laughs> and Louis wants nothing to do with him. This is a joke I've used in more than one movie of we don't have an ending. What about the bad guys in the backseat of the car? And it's played as a joke because that's mm -hmm. so stupid. And it's been in other movies, too, as a joke. This is actually the first time I've seen that happen as not a joke. Also, how does Louis know how to drive a car? Is Louis driving a car? Oh, no, sorry, Lestat. How does Lestat know how to drive a car? Well, he learned about electricity five years ago, so... <laughs> Um, yeah, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. None of it makes sense. And he's still wearing his, like, 1800s clothes. Yeah, didn't they just get burned up? Mm -hmm. The clothes come back faster than the person, apparently. Apparently. Because they'll, they show a shot of him crawling on the ceiling, completely engulfed in flames. Nothing you think that flammable lace is going to survive that? Maybe he had someone in 1988 make him a like 1800s outfit. I guess. Yeah, that's... Or in 1994. Yeah. He was, uh, I guess, just walking around naked before that. Yeah. What was he wearing when he's kind of in the chair? And I don't remember. I think he was wearing that same outfit. Okay. With the lace and the like. So after he like got all burnt up, dirty. he went and changed. Yeah. He just looks dirtier than he used to. That makes sense. Yeah. I don't know. So nothing can kill him. Sometimes recovery takes a day. Sometimes it takes a hundred years. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, but... Uh, what made me maybe even more angry is then they start playing Sympathy for the Devil, which is the most on the nose song you could choose. <laughs> but do they get do they get the Rolling Stones? No, they get a Guns N' Roses cover oh, of Sympathy for the Devil. That's weird. And nothing can be more bad 1994 movie to me than Guns N' Roses covering <laughs> Rolling Stones. Um, yeah. I, I don't like Guns N' Roses. So do you think that um, Kristen christian slater turns into a vampire do you think he chooses yes wait does he get the option from lestat i thought lestat just yeah needs lestat him. says i'm gonna give you the option that i never had that's like his oh he's gonna be the new one yeah sure okay that's more fun i think so but again it's i i forgot that even happens and then right now when you ask me my first instinct and it's a, a bad sign that my first instinct was i don't care yeah Movie's over. I'm done. I'm happy. Yeah. None of it made sense already. What more do, do I need from this? Mm -hmm. Which is a bad attitude to have, but it got me to that point. <laughs> I still really enjoyed this movie. I didn't hate watching it. It's just we're talking about it. And when you talk about it, you think about it. And the more you think about it, the worse this movie gets because it fundamentally doesn't make sense a lot of the time. What it does have going for it are fun set design, a few fun performances, and like the the gothic nature of it. And then vampires. Vampires are kind of fun. Yeah. And they just threw all that stuff in and they got this. And it's good at those things. It contains the things that are fun. Yeah. Is it a good movie? I don't think so. No. But it's kind of fun. Yeah, it's kind of fun. I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was like a fun world to like immerse yourself in. Costumes were great. And uh, I just don't think too hard about it. <laughs> I did have actual thoughts that I wrote down at some point. Um, 
this uses that thing about plagues and vampires going together, which was very much from uh, Nosferatu and was a lot about how vampire lore started because they would be associated with plagues and mostly it was used to demonize immigrants. Hmm. So there was, they used some of that. Right. The idea of this little girl who is uncontrollable because children don't have that mental capacity. And then if you give them the power to kill, that's inherently terrifying because children are unpredictable. And now mm-hmm. this child has uh, the ability to kill at will. That's scary. Yeah, that, was that fun. is scary. There's this idea of turning new people as a way into the modern world that Armand talks about. Like, that's why we turn new people. Mm -hmm. I can no longer be a part of this world. I'm outside of this world. You will be my way in. Right. Never really addressed again, but that's a cool thought. And that's like, that's totally makes sense when you think about it like that. And I feel like that's something that they should have experienced. Yeah, why can't these vampires just go out into the world? Why can't they go talk to people? Why do they have to be turning new people and be like, hey, what's the world like in there? Just go there. Yeah. Tell me about why you can't. Do they feel so detached from it because their otherness doesn't allow them to to be a part of society? I'd like to hear about it. Mm -hmm. Never talked about it. Yeah. Oh, and then uh, after this came out, very quickly after it came out, uh, this man murdered his girlfriend or stabbed her a bunch. And drank her blood and stuff and said it was because of the movie. So that's something. Oh. She did not die. Oh, she didn't die? No. Good for her. Yeah. She just got stabbed at lunch. Yeah, not so great for her. Not so good. But like, good job living. But this movie got past that while other movies were like banned for similar things. Mm -hmm. So that just shows you Tom Cruise's star power. (laughs) Yeah, no kidding. His movies don't get banned. Huh. I keep forgetting that that's Tom Cruise. Yeah, this movie. Wow. Still love it though, huh? Still love it. I think, you know what? I think it's fun. Yeah. I don't think it's good, but it is an enjoyable watch much of the time. It's not a masterpiece, but it was definitely fun. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes that's enough. Yeah. And you know when it's enough? Um, In a movie like this. Yeah. This isn't a movie that I'm going to want to watch every week. It's oh, like, God. If you did, I would have some concerns about you. <laughs> I just mean like there are movies that you could like comfort movies that you can like turn on whenever and they're like always nice. This is like, a, oh, this is on TV. Let's just like put it on in the background. And then you're like, wait, this is four hours now that it's on TV with <laughs> commercials? Because it was too long. It was well. too long. Yeah. I feel like we could have... Focused more on the important stuff and less on the like weird broody silences and then also made it half an hour shorter. Agreed. Okay, good. Glad we decided on that. Well, I think that brings us to the end. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. I don't think I have anything else about this movie. I have one little personal thing. Okay. Uh, I wrote a script called Interviews with Some Vampires. And it was a mockumentary film about uh, vampires in Edmonton. Oh. And it was it had a bunch of different characters. One who was like trying to live up to the ideals of Dracula. And he's like, man, I can't be that. Look at this dude. He's, look at all this hair. That guy's fucking awesome. Look <laughs> at me. And then there was a uh, like a 12-year-old who was trying to like get into a bar. And she's like, I can't even get to a fucking bar. I can't get a bank account. I can't do anything in this world. And it was about like vampires dealing with like modern day society Uh, and then the movie what we do in the shadows comes out and it did what i was trying to do and i did it better and then i was like all right that's the end of that and i never finished that script oh that's too bad but it was a funny title interviews with some vampires yeah yeah that's pretty good i like that i can see how other vampire things were like influenced by this but i definitely I think it's an important part of vampire lore. It it really does nail down that 90s high school goth culture. Mm-hmm. A lot of it came from this. Mm-hmm. So good for them because you know how much I love the goths. Yeah. I was thinking while we were watching it, I was like, man, like Stephanie Meyer, the writer of Twilight. Um, oh, there's a lot of. There's a the lot of Twilight. Yeah. Um, like that uh twilight took from this and i was like man she saw this movie or like read the book and then just like went hard on that vampire novel that she wanted to write Mm -hmm. so yeah i i feel like it's an important part of like vampire 
history. I feel like each generation makes their vampire more less off-putting and they try to make it more straight romance as mm-hmm. it goes on, culminating with Edward who just like sparkles in the sun and doesn't yeah. do anything bad. And it's just, no. They're taking all the danger out of the vampire. Yeah, they're dangerous. Dangerous and scary. Be scared of vampires, everyone. Speaking of scary, we need to briefly talk about next week's episode. Yes. Because we always do the pre-episodes and we have the themes and everything, but we need to know what theme we are going to do for next week. Yes. So, Samantha, I'm going to give you options for the movie okay. that will be in two weeks, which will also set up our theme for next week. So first, would you like serious scary, serious spooky, or fun comedy spooky i'm gonna go serious spooky okay because we've like done it. a lot of like fun spooky over the last couple of years fun. and and this week so i feel like i'm ready for like a real scary scare i didn't say real scary i, I mean like serious. a serious spooky. although i think it's kind of scary okay then next question we're going serious uh-huh. werewolf or witch i feel like both of those go really well with vampires, but I'm going to go witch. Sounds good. So next week we will have two spoiler-free witch picks. Yeah. Oh, witch picks. That witch sounds picks. fun. I like and that. And we'll preview our big witch watch for the movie <laughs> for the week after that. Perfect. Witch picks, then the witch watch. Witch watch. Oh, man. Um, I am excited. I love Spooktober. And I'm excited for like a serious spooky movie. All right. We'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Ooh. That's a ghost witch.